there's something very genuine of when you have pride in what you do because then the value that you create it has no boundaries. I'm an Angelino. So this is what Made in LA looks like. This is what Made in LA looks like. And Cisco Pinedo is the living embodiment of a slogan he's made famous in Los Angeles. I was made in Mexico and <laughs> you know, oh, half cook in Mexico and I was you know, finally baked here in LA. Pinedo is the founder and CEO of Cisco Home a furniture and home decor company he started nearly 30 years ago in his South Central garage. Pinedo's custom-made pieces are not only designed by him, every chair, every table, all the fixtures are handmade by craftspeople in Los Angeles. South Central, to be exact. Pinedo started as a furniture apprentice, tearing upholstery at 14, and quickly turned to furniture making on the side. Before I knew it, I was selling it to a designer, and then after that, the designer was selling it to a big Hollywood star, and all of a sudden, you know, the word was out that there was this amazing craftsman in South Central. Tourists converge on his Melrose Avenue store daily. Pinedo's slogan is one of the most Instagrammed walls in L.A. But the real showmanship is on the other side of the wall, like recycling every type of material that comes his way. This textiles in particular are from Guatemala. So they're um, women's skirts, and <laughs> okay. we literally, you know, <laughs> just pick skirts from them. Pinedo's Latin heritage is woven into many of his pieces. Coming from Mexico with his migrant worker father in the 1970s, Pinedo says he was undocumented and always welcomed by the farm families who hired them. But when the whole family moved to South Central, it was a culture shock. There was a lot of conflicts between, you know, especially Mexicans and African Americans. So my mom didn't want me to be in the streets too much. So, she, you know, she says, you had to find a part time job or something. <laughs> she put you to work. <laughs> she yeah. put me to work. So I found this little, um, you know, um, furniture shop and I kind of fell in love with the with the craft uh, right out of the bat. It's just it was something very magical, making something with your bare hands. We visited the South Central neighborhood where Pinedo grew up and where he now employs the various craftspeople who make his products. From glass blowers to carpenters to metal workers to upholsterers. How important is it to, to remain in South Central? I, you know, it's part of who I am. I mean, I don't know if I can change that. You know, it's just, I tell people, I, you know, I live in, I, I sleep in Pasadena and I live in South Central. So. <laughs> <laughs> His workers tell us Pinedo makes them aspire to have more in life. They're taught skills and given opportunities to not simply labor, but create careers. Here in upholstery production, Jose Galvez went from sweeping floors to managing a hundred craftspeople. Out of all your employees, how many came like unskilled and now are working machines? God, I don't know, probably 60, 70 percent. Oh, wow, yeah. most of them. Yeah. My hope is that we can inspire people to become self-sustained in their own life with their own, their own means. But we end up with amazing people, you know, they end up in uh, building great careers, you know, as makers. Pinedo says that's his life's mission, and he embodies it. Hard work coupled with imagination to craft a life. It's how he crafts every new collection as well. And I work with the craftsmen, and we kind of start molding what I, my vision is of a new design, and then we take it to the design team once it's finished. Okay, so you, you will hand make a prototype yourself and then give it to a design team to digitize it. Basically. To digitize it and record it and throw it in our files and to be able to use that information for the rest of the team. Okay. I know, what, it's totally what? backwards. Yeah. <laughs> in the metal shop that makes lamps, mirrors, and table frames from recycled materials, inspiration comes from anything and everything. Those are dryers. Dryers, yeah. Okay. So, and we make lights out of them. So literally people shows up and sometimes they come in a truck and they just go, hey, we need to get rid of this. We're going to take it to the dumpster. And they, we are the stop before they go to the dumpster. <laughs> so where else do you source all your stuff? Construction sites, uh, people that are doing demolition, uh, movie sets. Chili pepper, right? Even if that raw material <laughs> takes the so form cool. of a giant doing? chili pepper. <laughs> You know, literally one day we show up in the morning and when it was little left by the gate, somebody just 
left it there. So I still haven't figured out what to do with it, so don't ask me. Oh, okay, okay. So, but there's a plan somewhere. The, oh, we, okay. will, we will come up with something. Maybe we open a taco truck and we put it on top of it. <laughs> I love it already, man. Like others, Pinedo has moved into entrepreneurship. The metal shop is owned by Conan Carrillo, Pinedo's former maintenance worker. Five, six years ago, he, t he told me I wanted to be on my own. He, he was gonna give me the chance to be on my own. And like, I was waiting for that opportunity. And here we are. You came here as an undocumented worker yourself. Why is it so important to, for others to get into entrepreneurship? If I can do it, anybody else can do it. We don't have to be like on the streets, like asking for money. We, we, if we came to work, if we get ourselves to focus and be working, I think we can get results. We're trying to prepare them like that. They can start their own business they want to. How do you feel about your role in providing these kinds of opportunities to immigrants? Well, I feel like the opportunity was given to me. So I, I, to me, it's very, it comes very natural. I feel like we all deserve that and we all should have that opportunity. So I don't, it's not that I take it for granted, but I feel like it's the right thing to do. Giving back for Pinedo has extended beyond his factories. He co-founded a foundation that teaches ex-felons in Brooklyn entrepreneurship through making reclaimed furniture and starting their own businesses. The whole point is to teach them how to, cre to add value to making something. You know, I think I have put uh, maybe about 11, 12 people to the program. And you know, if you combine them all, they employ now about 120 people. Pinedo started a foundation to provide scholarships and support to LA's college-bound Latino students. The current debate around the status of dreamers and the expiration of DACA has made him an activist. As a high school dropout who came here undocumented, these kids bring out the fighter in him. People coming out of Mexico or Latin America, the situation in those countries is so horrific that at the end of the day, you know, people are gonna do whatever they need to do for what's the best for their families. And if you're in their shoes, being illegal in this country, it's not a bad place to be if you compare it to the place that you come from. Do you think people should be following the law if they don't have a visa that they shouldn't be allowed in? Well, of course people should be following the law. But their situation in this country is so bad that they'd rather survive and they'd rather put food on their table of their kids. and take that chance. Is entrepreneurship a way out? Absolutely. I think it's a ticket to everything. You can deny someone for being legal. And you can deny someone, you know, keeping them um, food or, you know, helping the homeless on the street. But um, when you create a craft for yourself, nobody can take that away from you. And you can take that anywhere. You can build your own future with your bare hands. You can make your own future. Yeah. And I think that's, to me, it's the answer to everything. <laughs>